Hi there. Now for this part of the question, we're told that we've got this curve here, C, given by the parametric equations up here. And we've got a point P on C, which has coordinates here of 3, 2. So we'll just mark that in as having coordinates 3, 2. And we're told then that this line L is normal to the curve C. And we've got to find out the X coordinate at the point Q, where it cuts the X axis. So in order to do this, what I'm going to need to do then is find the equation of the line L and set y equal to 0 to get q. And to get the line L, I'm just going to be using the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, where x1, y1 will be 3 and 2. Problem is, I don't have the gradient m. And I get the gradient m by, first of all, finding the gradient of the tangent at p by finding dy by dx for this parametric equation. So once I've found dy by dx, which I'm going to do by the chain rule, okay? Remember, dy by dx is equal to dy by d theta times d theta by dx. So dy by d theta will be fine. For d theta by dx, we'll just do dx by d theta and then reciprocate it. So then that will give me my gradient of the tangent here, and then we can take the negative reciprocal of that and get the gradient of the normal. Plug it in the equation of the line then, and set y equal to 0. So that's where we're going with this. So first of all then, we need to find out dy by d theta. So we've got y equals 4 cos squared theta. And we can think of this then as being equal to 4 times the cosine of theta all squared and use the chain rule when it comes to differentiating that. So for dy by d theta, what we've got then is by the chain rule, it's going to be 2 times 4, which we know is 8, then reduce the power on the cos theta. So that's just cos theta to the power 1. And then we multiply all of this by the differential of cos theta, which is minus sine theta. So cleaning this up, what we've got then is minus 8 sine theta cos theta. OK, so that's dy by d theta. We need dx by d theta. So we'll have here dx by d theta is going to equal, and differentiating this with respect to theta, is just going to give me 3 sec squared theta. And that's the same then as 3 divided by cos squared theta. OK, so we've got basically our two bits that we need for finding dy by dx. So we've got dy by d theta, which is minus 8 sine theta cos theta and we need to multiply this then with d theta by dx so we just need to reciprocate this so it's going to be cosine squared theta over 3 and if we tidy this up what we end up with then is minus 8 sine theta times cos cubed theta and that's all over 3 well, I could just leave it as minus 8 thirds, up to you. OK, so we've now got the gradient of the tangent at any point on this curve C. So we need to get the gradient of the tangent at the point P. But that depends on knowing the x-coordinate. And here we've just got it in terms of theta. So we need to get what that parameter theta is going to be when x equals 3. So we just turn to our parametric equation up here, x equals 3 tan theta. So we can say that when x equals 3 at p here, we know that 3 must equal 3 tan theta. So therefore, 3 equals 3 tan theta. 
and that means that tan theta must be equal to 1 if we divide by 3 and so theta must be equal to the inverse tan of 1. And that's in degrees, 45 degrees, but we've got to work in radians, which is pi upon 4. There's only that one solution, pi upon 4, because we're restricted to this domain, theta greater than or equal to 0, but less than pi upon 2. So now we've got theta at p, and so we should be able to work out what the gradient of the tangent is, and then hence work out what the gradient of the normal is for L. So going back over here then, we just say that when theta equals pi upon 4, okay, radians there, we've got that therefore dy by dx, the gradient of the tangent, must be equal to minus 8 thirds then, multiplied by the sine of theta, the sine of pi upon 4, which is 1 over root 2. Or if you do it on your calculator, it's obviously going to rationalise this and give you root 2 over 2. For cos of pi upon 4, that's the same, 1 over root 2. So you've got 1 over root 2 all cubed. OK, so 1 over root 2 all cubed there. And if you work this out, it comes out at minus 2 thirds. So that's the gradient of your tangent. So therefore... The gradient of L, the normal, must be equal to the negative reciprocal of this, okay, by the perpendicular gradient rule. So that's going to be 3 over 2. So that means, therefore, we know that the equation of L takes on the form y minus y1, so that's y minus 2, okay, equals the gradient, which is 3 over 2 times x minus x1, x1 being the 3 at p. And if I multiply through by 2 here, we therefore have 2y minus 4 equals just 3 times that bracket, which is going to be 3x minus 9. And I can see then that at q, remember all we need to do is set y equal to 0. And if y equals 0 and we rearrange this for x, we see that x turns out to be 5 thirds. Okay?